Hello and welcome! Sunyan here with another vlog for robotics. Now, last vlog was a four minute rant of me uh, talking about threats of being bombed by North Korea. And that's the most popular recent video I ever did. But alas, we will try not to succumb to the peer pressure of sensationalism and the next at least three or four vlogs shall be on educational technological topics like the one for today. So my Pokemon probability game in Python has evolved. It's gone from just a like, little prototype using Turtle to a fully developed game, well, a mostly developed game using Pygame. And I will show you this game and maybe give you a bit of a context because I'm going around uh, Melbourne and the country uh, with this like 90 minute a probability presentation to some 36 groups of uh, like upper primary gifted kids and um, here's what we're talking about so I'll, I'll minimize myself so the game is based on like Pokemon Go essentially in Pokemon Go what you have is a map which is a grid on this map somehow some way uh, Pokemon appear and it's mostly at random, but not totally at random. Like some species of Pokemon are more likely to appear near water, some more near mountains, others near really congested areas. So I just thought I'd make a little probability game uh, where we use dice as the source of randomness. So let's have a look at the way it works. So a Pokemon will show up somewhere uh, with coordinates, with an X Y value and a Y value. Um, the rules in Pokemon Go are pretty mysterious, but um, in this game it's pretty basic. There will be a, 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 an equation that includes a dice variable that's going to tell you where Pokemon is going to appear, his X and Y coordinates. And um, just so that you know, like an example, if Squirtle is going to appear at X equals 7, Y equals 9, Tan tan tan, he should be there. Oops. <laughs> this is X, 7, Y9. So, let's have a look at the first. Um, oh, one more thing. Yeah, rules. So, I do this with kids that are in groups of four. And um, they have to try to hunt Pokemon in, group, in, in their whole group. So, each kid we'll get to put four X's and four O's. X's are traps for Pokemon and O's are sort of campsites um, that you do not want Pokemon to land on because that could, you know, interdimensionality from parallel worlds or whatever could cause you havoc. It may make you disappear in another dimension and never come back. So the whole idea is that the groups have to cooperate. They have to combine their sort of X's um, on the grid so they don't use the same spots but they also have to think about the equations and where Pokemon are most likely to appear so for the first one for example the X coordinate will be a dice by six and the Y coordinate will be a dice by six and for so that's that that's where Squirtle is gonna land and the Charmander is gonna land inside dice six dice six sided dice plus three and also Y is gonna be the same coordinate so in other words what students are meant to figure out, and they don't figure it out in the first try, but they do eventually, is that the Squirtle is going to land, you know, you're going to throw a dice, you're going to get a value up to 6, and a Y value up to 6. So Squirtle is going to land in this square. And for the Charmander, it'll be Y is 3 plus up to 6. So it'll land basically from here inside a square, like right there. Um, and what what you want students to do is to figure out that these two regions overlap and they're meant to be putting their traps around here because those are the most likely places. Of course, no amount of calculation can guarantee success. All it does is multiply your chances over randomness by a factor of maybe six or seven. So you go from, you know, four out of 124, which, bah, I don't know, is three and a half, four percent to something like 20% chance of catching a Pokemon. Okay, so let me run a round one and show you what that looks like. Okay, so we got two files at play, the first of which draws the grid. 
so this file I call the grid and it's imported as a module and it actually has uh, some functionality to it it sends a message to the screen it draws a grid and numbers the grid and uh, it has like messages identifying the X and the Y coordinate and then we have the game file and the game file basically does as follows it rolls it creates 500 simulations of that random six by six and then picks the most popular one and draws the squirtle pokemon there and does the same thing and then draws the charmander pokemon um, and i think the best way to show you is just to run it where are you yep so yeah as i said squirtle will be appearing here charmander will be appearing there and the smart money would have been on marking these boxes but who knows maybe these boxes are going to yield nothing as you can see that's what happened so what happens next for students is they get a more complicated e equation so this one actually has some dice subtraction so if you think about it 10 minus dice 6 the smallest possible value is 4 and the highest possible value is 9 so this is between 4 and 9 on the x and 8 minus die 6 that's between 2 and 7 on the y and this one interestingly has two dice combined which is as we know sort of from vegas probability and what was the name craps the most likely number to come up is 7 the next two most likely are 6 and 5 and this one here is going to skip every odd numbered field so let's check out what that looks like Do -do -do. as you can see the x is 4 and 9 and y is 2 and 7 and the other one is basically skipping every odd number so what students are beginning to pick up is that not every field is equally likely to yield a Pokemon. Some of them, like the ones right here, right here, right here, have literally got a 0% chance. And those are the places where they can put their O. While the others even have an overlap. So this whole line right here between, you know, 9 and 2 and Y of 6 and this line and this line have got literally double the chance of any of the second best block and what the whole point of this game is is to add a little bit of excitement it's 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 like bingo but it's not for the old people it's a pokemon themed bingo but it's not based on just luck if you sort of understand the patterns of dice and if you understand how equations work you're able to make better and better predictions and so far the kids are absolutely loving it and I'm motivated to actually create um, a version of the game where you can play so you will download your Python file you will mark your traps and mark your O's and um, you will have a running score and you will also have an expected value score of what you would expect to get if you marked your uh, places at random and by the time the game is over it should tell you a score in terms of multiple of the expected value so that's going to basically indicate if you are a lot more lucky than you should be at random in other words if you're making sort of smart bets and smart investments okay i think um that covers it i'm gonna maximize myself and um, what I'd like to hear from you guys is suggestions on what more we could add to this program. I will have a link to the program below and I would love some advice on how to organize that code better. I have something like 14 functions in total over two files. Um, I'm beginning to think I would have done a better job if I decided to go object oriented but it's a bit too late for that. What I would like advice on is how I could get those traps drawn onto the screen by clicking on particular fields. As far as I'm thinking, I'm going to have to create um, a lot of if statements with very specific ranges for X and Y. 
but I'm open to hearing other ideas. Anyway, code in there. I would like to hear your comments. Subscribe. This is going to keep on coming and I am making more videos than ever. Okay. See you later.